Yeah, so Glasgow Women on Wheels is organised Sorry. by Bike for Good, Glasgow Life and Scottish Cycling as a part of a legacy project leading up to the 2023 UCI World Championships, which are going to be held in Glasgow. Um, and as part of the festival, we've got organised a whole range of events, including cycling lessons, sled rides, talks, screenings, yoga, art printing workshops, and a lot more. So make sure to check out our full listing on our website. It's under bikeforgood.org.uk forward slash gwow. Um, today we're joined by Monica Sattler, who's going to give us an incredible talk about how to pursue goals that scare us. Um, Monica comes from an incredible background within cycling and empowerment in general and developing leadership skills. So I'll pass on to Monica now so she can go through our talk. And at the end, we'll be ho hosting a Q&A session. So if you have any questions at all, please feel free to put them in the chat and Monica can answer them at the end. Awesome. Thank you very much, Rosie. Um, hello, everyone. Um, in general, I would already say, like, if you have any questions uh, during the talk, during the presentation, um, this is a very intimate group, so feel free just to, uh, um, yeah, uh, to ask away. Um, otherwise, I will be sharing now my screen. Can you see it? Awesome. Okay, so uh, today I would like to talk about how to pursue the big goals um, from a seemingly impossible um, cycling record. So who am I? Um, I'm Monica, um, I'm originally from Germany and uh, with 19, um, I moved to the United States on a volleyball scholarship. Um, I probably watched too much James Bond because my goal, my career goal was to be um, a secret agent and I want to work for the Bundesnachrichtendienst for the German secret service and that's why I studied nuclear weapons uh, in North Korea and in Iran at Georgetown University. For some odd reason it didn't work out <laughs> and um, but I did love the international community that international flair and that's why I worked first for the International Monetary Fund and then for the World Bank. While I was working for the World Bank, um, someone at some point uh, handed a bike to me and said, Monica, try, try this out. And I was like, this must be so boring. <laughs> I come from volleyball, a lot of team sports, but I fell immediately in love. I loved it so much that after one year, I had to make a big decision. Um, having a career, aspiring career uh, at the World Bank or being a poor professional cyclist. And uh, my family is more traditional and uh, conservative in that sense. And they say, Monica, you know, uh, you should go for the career, for the status, for the money, and um, not for the sports. You never know how long that will last. But there was something in my heart which told me I should try it out. And I could always go back to uh, um, this aspiring career. So I did become a poor professional cyclist <laughs> for exactly three months because in those three months, I realized that this is not what I wanted to do. Um, there was too much risk involved and too much uh, elbowing and I was, that was not just me, but I loved the sport. And uh, that's why I studied uh, sports then afterwards at the University of uh, Minnesota. I just have to, one second. Um, and my goal was to find a career in sports. So I looked around, applied everywhere, but I could not find that job, what I really wanted to do. And uh, my family uh, in the background said, Monica, I know you have two master degrees and you should have like a real job. So um, now knowing that I couldn't find like a real, uh, like a job in sports with that, what I love doing, um, I applied anywhere in the world and with anything, anywhere and anything. And I became all of a sudden a management consultant uh, for IBM. And um, first of all, in uh, Zurich, Switzerland, and then afterwards in uh, Melbourne, Australia. And although this was a very good experience, um, learning about how that world looks like, it was not for me. I love sports and that is what I wanted to do. So after two years of um, being a management consultant, I was sitting unemployed in the botanical garden in Melbourne, Australia, and asking me that big question, what's the purpose of my life? What do I really want to do? I have another at least 35 years of uh, working in, ahead of me. Is 
just some random job what I want to do or is it actually that I can find that what I'm burning for what my heart um, is standing for so I had no idea what it was but I wanted to find out and I, uh, I gave myself one year trying to figure out what I want to do and if I can't figure it out I still could go back into um, have some sort of job so where do I start I looked at a world map I don't know if you've ever done this, looking at a world map and like, if you could live wherever you want, where would you want to live? And it was actually quite difficult, um, but there were a few factors which um, uh, pointed me that I have to live in the EU. Uh, I want to have sunny weather because of cycling. And yeah, then one country came to mind for me and that was Spain. So I took my bike, packed it and I had a small little backpack and had a one-way ticket from Melbourne, Australia to Malaga, Spain. I didn't speak a word of Spanish, did not know anyone there, and I've never been to Malaga before. And I was ready to figure out what I want to do um, in my life. And while I tried all kinds of jobs in the cycling industry, being a distributor, being a YouTuber, being all kinds of things, um, I came across quite a lot of people. And I found that actually I'm not the only one with this kind of looking for what I'm made of, like what my full potential is. And I realized this is actually how I want to help. I want to help others, especially women, to reach their full potential, to go for bigger challenges, to take on the risks, to see what they're able to do. And I had to look for something, I want to look for something because this is not exactly an elevator pitch, what I just did. I had to look for something which showcased exactly that. What does it mean to go for something big, for something seemingly impossible? And that's why I decided to be the first woman in history riding the Tour of Spain, one of the grand tours, um, which are currently only by male professionals, um, more a little bit later. And now I'm actually having my own company. I'm based in Switzerland. I'm, I'm a fem female career and leadership coach doing exactly that, what I love, helping others, especially women, going for bigger challenges, especially in their professional life. So the Vuelta España, or um, the Tour of Spain is one of the three grand tours in the world. It's um, with the Tour de, Tour de France or Giro d'Italia. Yeah, only the best male professional racers can, can do it. And there's no such thing as a women's race. And I decided to be the first woman of riding every stage of the entire 3000 kilometers in 21 days at the same day as the male professionals just hours beforehand. That would take 129 hours of riding, which is about six plus hours a day. It's over 48,000 meters of elevation gain. It's basically 111 times up the Empire State Building. Yeah, 21 days and over 3,000 kilometers. If that is not challenging enough already, that physical part, the logistical part was just as challenging. As you can see on the Spain map, is all the yellow lines are the stages. And the end of one stage is not necessarily the beginning of the next stage. So I needed someone who was driving me from one place to the next. I needed food, I needed drinks, I needed a support person, I needed 21 hotels, I needed an accreditation to actually being able to do this. And sure, um, when, I, when you look at it, seeing the logistical and physical part of this challenge, it seems almost like impossible to do. But I was excited to share um, this uh, challenge and uh, this project with um, all my friends, family, and um, acquaintances. And most of the people, in fact, 80% of the people doubted my success. Um, some were more subtle, some were pretty direct, like um, Andre, who said, your plan sounds very unrealistic. Are you sure you want or can do this? And sure, here I was standing there, super excited about a project um, to, uh, with a mission, with a big mission to inspire others, especially women, to go for something bigger. Um, for taking risks and seeing what, what our potential is. And yeah, a lot of people told me it's impossible to do. And this is exactly what it's about. How do you pursue those big goals, the goals where maybe others are doubting it, or maybe that even there's a time where you're doubting yourself. And I realized that all through my life journey, not only sports, but also in my career and in um, yeah, personal life, that I, when I'm going for something big, that I've actually always going through the same structure of going for something and uh, successfully. And 
that's why I developed a method. I call it the RAD method. So RAD, for those who speak German, um, is also a bike, but in this case, it's actually an acronym. It stands for real, adventurous, and daring. Those are the three steps to uh, go for goals, even like the seemingly impossible ones. The real is being yourself, um, standing true to yourself. The A for adventurous to the way to get to that goal. And the D for taking the disc, uh, risk, for taking that daring step to go actually that way to go for your goals. So what does that mean? The first one is being yourself, being authentic. And that starts with embracing yourself. And that means embracing your strength, your likes, but also your weaknesses. While, when I was training for the Vuelta, for 3,000 kilometers and 48,000 meters of climbing, I knew what my weakness were. It was the mountains. I'm not exactly um, like a mountain goat. And sure, I could have said to myself the entire time how much I'm treading, uh, riding up every of those climbs in the Pyrenees. But I decided, you know what? Maybe it's not really a weakness. Maybe I maybe I not can completely turn it into strength, but I don't need to tread um, those kind of mountains because I'm going so slow up the mountains that actually means that I can enjoy the view of Spain and the valleys a lot more. So um, yes, I'm still going slow up, but my mindset has shifted. And I was actually also embracing myself in that, as a whole in that sense and enjoying also the parts where I might be weak in it. So I think for being real, for being authentic, it's also important so much to be okay with your weaknesses and maybe even being able to turn them into strength. The next one is staying true to your own values. When I was um, uh, preparing for the welter, I had a lot of trouble of getting the project together because 80% of the people believed it was impossible to do. So it was tough for me to create a team and it was tough for me to get money and um, sponsors. And one day, an Australian travel company called me up and said, Monica, we heard about your project, it sounds great. Um, we would love to help you. We would like to give you the van, the people, um, the, the money, um, the food, whatever you need. The only thing is uh, what might be changed a little bit is that it wouldn't be the Walter ride anymore and you inspiring others um, to go for bigger challenges, but he would be part of our travel project. It didn't take me even a second to decline because this was not the point. It was not a point of just writing a record. The point was having a mission, a bigger mission of inspiring others to go for bigger challenges. And those pictures you see here, otherwise never would have been taken. There were really people in the middle of Spain with black heads out and saying, vamos Monica, or the photo here with the father and his 12 year old son joined me on a Sunday morning at 6 a.m. for 40 kilometers to be part of this project. If I would have taken the easy path, those pictures would never have been taken and this project would never have been known. So it's so important, especially for those big goals to stick to your values and stay true to them. Next one is about having a support network of being surrounded by those people who truly believe in you. And that doesn't necessarily have to be family and friends. It can be also people who happened to be in the presence when you're going for this goal. And this actually happened to me. I mean, my family truly supported me, but so did also people who I've never met beforehand. In fact, actually those um, two guys um, next to me, left and right, the right person was the support person, my support person. I met him three weeks before the world tough. Um, uh, yeah, and we just like, okay, um, uh, let's do this together. And he joined me for those three weeks. And in the beginning, I was a little hesitant of if is it like the right match of being a support person because it requires a lot of 24 seven kind of um, support. He was, we were afterwards best friends. It was incredible. And we only known each other three weeks before him because he believed in my mission. He believed in that, uh, what we want to achieve together. And all of a sudden it became a synergy an incredible synergy. And the person on my, uh, at that point, right side, Maya, she, I also did not know her beforehand. And I just wrote her if she wants to join me for the second week. And she joined and she was the best domestic I could ever imagine. She knew when I had to eat, she knew when I had to drink or if I want to get rid of a jacket or not, she knew it all. And it was incredible. And if without those two people, I might or might not have made this. So having a support network of going for big goals, even the seemingly impossible ones, it's absolutely incredible and doesn't need to be family and friends. It's just those people who believe in your goals and your mission 
and in your vision. Now comes the A, the adventurous path, trading your way. When I was training for the Vuelta, I lived at that point in Mallorca. And Mallorca is a beautiful cycling island and uh, riding there is incredible. But um, if you have to ride or train for 3000 kilometers, at some point Mallorca becomes very small. So uh, I need to define something else, how to make my training interesting and that I don't get bored by my own training and then maybe getting actually mental fatigue before I even start this huge project. So I decided to ride from Mallorca to Munich to visit my dad. And I took a small little backpack, as you can see in the picture, with all the clothing you see in the middle of it. And off I was um, taking the ferry to Toulon, France, and then riding in five days from Toulon to Munich. It was an incredible experience. But as you can see, I also was wearing like a super, super woman dress. And there was a reason for it. My mission was to inspire to go for bigger challenges, especially women. But there are people out there who cannot choose their challenge, the challenges given to them. And that's exactly those people who I visited. Children hospitals um, in the cancer section, in Palma de Mallorca and in Munich. I gave them comic books, hoping to get a smile out of it, but also to remind myself that's actually a privilege for me to go for such a big challenge, to choose my challenges. Other people cannot choose their challenge. So why should I inhibit myself <clears throat> to go for something big when others might not even have that choice? So when I was riding from Mallorca to Munich, it was cold or I was tired or I was hungry. I remembered this very moment in the hospital, reminding myself that the things currently which keeps me away from keep going are nothing compared to other people, what challenges they are facing. Last but not least is the D for rat daring, going for it. That is, we can have all the plan we want to go for this biggest goal we want. But if we're not taking that very first step to go for it, it will always stay a dream. Why are we not taking that very first step to go for it? Because oftentimes we see going for a goal like this. There's the present, there's the future, the goal. And then by going to the goal, we're entering a big black magic box filled with security, with fear, with the unknown. And we're just hoping that when we're exiting this big black magic box, that all of a sudden there's success in our goal. But because this black box is filled with negative emotions, no one wants to enter this box. And we don't even know if we ex when we're exiting it, if it's failure or success. So most of the time or often, we're not even taking the step into towards our goal because we're exactly scared of those negative emotions. But what is if we're actually seeing it more like this? There's the present, there's the goal, the future. And with every little step towards the goal, we're gaining experiences, competencies, possibilities, knowledge and contacts that even if for some reason we are not able to reach our goal, other doors might open up with new goals. But those doors would only open up if we're actually taking the first step to go for it. And this is, is this not actually what life is about, of collecting all these experiences, making every day count? This is the picture of me on the first stage by myself, standing there, ready to take on 3, 000, over 3,000 kilometers, 126 hours. This is the last stage. Over 35 women were all of a sudden at um, the start line of the last stage in Madrid, wanting to join me for the last stage and uh, were inspired by this project. What I realized is that all the actions we are doing, every one of us, we are role models to others, especially also to women. Um, and incredible when you can see what you can achieve by your actions. It's sometimes not obvious, but someone will look at what you're doing and will feel inspired when you're taking the actions. So all of us are role models for the younger generations of achieving, wanting to achieve big things.
And this was more than just a right. This was more than just a project. It was about inspiring others to go for bigger challenges. 80% of the people believed it was impossible to do. And this project got into uh, 10 different countries, over 50 different media coverages, and including national TV. I would never have thought um, that this would have happened if I didn't take the first step, if I didn't believe those 20% of the people who actually believed in me and believed in my own mission and the vision that we can agree, uh, achieve great things together. So uh, how do you pursue the big goals? Be yourself, be you, being authentic, embracing yourself, staying true to your values and having and creating a support network. Being adventurous, creating your own way of making it fit so that you enjoy the way to go for it and always know where you're coming from and what kind of privilege we're actually having to choose or to choose our challenges. And D for daring of going for it, taking that step because we don't know what we're missing out if we're not going for the steps of collecting all the experiences, expertise, knowledge and connections. There's one last thing, and that is a quote I would like to leave you by. Define, you, define success on your own terms, achieve it by your own rules and build a life you're proud to live. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you so much, Monica. That was so inspiring. Um, wonderful. Would you like the group to turn off their cameras so we can have a little chat? Yeah, if um, everyone wants to turn on their cameras, that would be great. Yeah, fantastic. Um, if you, um, you could keep it up there if you like, but if you stop sharing um, your screen, Monica, we can go back and we can um, mm -hmm. see. Um, fab, thank you so much. Oh my goodness, that was wonderful. Um, such an inspiring story, so much. So much to be spoken about and uh, and so unpacked. Um, so yes, everyone feel free if you're comfortable um, with turning off your cameras, we can have a little chat as a group. Um, if not, feel free to sort of just um, put your comments in the uh, in the chat as well. Thanks, guys. Um, so yeah, just straight off the bat, has anybody got any questions for Monica or any sort of comments you'd like to drop in? I know Here, I'm I'll ask you a question, Monica. Hey, Steen. Why do you think there was so much media coverage? Um, <laughs> it's, um, I did not. Uh, I did not know it. In fact, um, and I did not do it for the media coverage. Oh, you I mean why it happened afterwards? Um, yeah, because I, I think... remember hearing about it, and uh, I was gripped. And I assume I... there was so much media coverage because it's such a male-dominated race, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it was, I mean, it was also because of the strategy. We, uh, I put the race, uh, I wrote exactly then where the media was already present. A lot oh. of those rights um, have been taken one week beforehand and then the media is not exactly there. And um, so, uh, yeah, that was easy for them also. <laughs> easy uh, food um, to get and uh, talk about it. But then I think also like the impact you can see uh, locally, um, really at the last stage, there were, and that was only one of those stages. There were so many um, people joining me along the rides. It really, it was incredible. So I think, and that um, all together uh, created um, a beautiful story. Oh, and, and, and where do you get your drive from? Are you a natural sportswoman? Um, I think I like sports is really my life in that sense. I, I love sports and that is where I get my energy from. Um, so it's, I think it's a vicious, or oh, not a, a virtuous circle in that sense. Yeah. And oh, I think when, yeah, when you're starting and you find the purpose of sports, especially cycling, you know, and you found the group, uh, the, the reason why you're cycling, um, then it's really, you just want to ride every day. And are you still riding regularly, Monica? Yes. In fact, actually, um, I'm right now in the Swiss mountains and uh, we have a big uh, day planned tomorrow. Yeah, oh, so I'm great. definitely writing still, so, yeah. That's great. Do you know, Monica, if there's any, been any talk of including women in the, in the race that, um, that particular one that you sort of went mm -hmm. on? 
Um, I'm not completely up to date because a lot of things have happened um, recently, but um, they are producing right now um, for those three races, um, similar female races. Not, I think not the full three weeks, but I think the Giro has now 10 days or 14 days. Um, so yeah, uh, they're working on it now to finally getting some equality. Wonderful. That's really good to hear. I bet you had such a part to play in that as well, because it's it's gestures like yours that really go to just showing people, you know, that, that there's a space needed for women specifically in these sort of in these arenas. I think it's then I, I did a super small part because there are a lot of women out there who uh, do incredible work of advocating for those kind of races. Sure, sure. <laughs> Um, wonderful. Anybody else got any questions or comments? Julie, yeah, go ahead. Thanks, Lorna. Hello again. And thanks, Monica. That was yeah, really interesting. And your, your motivation is really inspiring. I just wondered, you talked about a support team, but I wondered if you have your own coach or trainer and if that's for different aspects like mental, um, you know, stamina and physical stamina. Um, how much of it is your self-motivation? Um, yeah, thanks. Oh, no, uh, thank you, Julie. Um, I don't have a coach. Um, I had actually one, when I wanted to become professional, I mentioned I was three months, I thought I have to have a coach and because this is what everyone has and uh, training with heart rate, power meter and all that. But then I realized, in fact, actually, I didn't want to write anymore because that took the fun out of me. Um, I started writing when I was writing in groups and I love the atmosphere. And that is where I got the most also out of me of chasing people or going for that um, city sprint and then having coffee afterwards. So the entire package of it, that made me, um, yeah, the motivation uh, to write. Um, usually I don't like writing by myself. So I do like writing with people and catching up. And that's where the kilometers come into play. Um, I did have a few solo adventures. One of them was from Mallorca to Munich, I did by myself. But there was a clear mission also then why I'm doing um, some of this. And I think when you are doing something for me at now, in that sense, not just for myself, but for like a bigger good for creating some impact, then it's not even a question of motivation. You just do it because there's something people are also looking at uh, what you're doing and you want to be um, creating that positive impact in other people's lives. I was going to ask another question. Please. Did um, any of the male teams ever acknowledge your achievement? Very, very good question. Um, I was actually interviewed um, in a um, regional TV um, television, um, TV show in Germany. And next to me was one of the best sprinters, German sprinters, which I'm sorry, I have forgotten his name. And um, he could not believe it. <laughs> you cannot believe what I'm doing because I'm doing it by myself versus while, while the pros are like in a peloton. And um, so I think, uh, yes, there was definitely a, a acknowledgement and um, a lot of uh, pros knew also about this challenge. Um, but some of them, they are then, of course, doing that challenge, uh, doing their own race. So focus on themselves and so focus on their own performance that, you know, there was not really a connection at that point. But afterwards, I did talk to pros and um, yeah. Uh, yeah, because it's quite interesting because they never seem to um, focus so much on the people who drop out of these, you know, the racers who drop out, you know, the three big European races, uh, the, the Vuelta and the Giro and the Tour de France and, mm -hmm. you know, riders drop out every single day and it, yeah. it doesn't get focused on. I don't think people really appreciate just how hard it is even to start and finish, never yeah. mind and getting any points or getting on the podium. So just to start and finish one of these huge yeah. races is such a monumental yeah. achievement, you know? Absolutely. Yes, I fully agree. Yeah, of course. Um, I think television is focused on the winners and uh, on the success and or if uh, a crazy crash happened, but otherwise, yeah, it's quite quiet um, what happens in the background. Yes, and it's only very recently, it seems that a little bit more focus is going to the women's races, which is not in uh, comparison with other sports that have suddenly gained momentum, like football, for example. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of spotlight on women's yeah. football, but there's still no spotlight on uh, women's uh, cycle racing, mm -hmm. which is bizarre, um, really. Uh, so hopefully that will change in the next few years. 
Um, hopefully, it'll change with you know some bigger events, especially coming to Glasgow in 2023. Yes, so. definitely. Yeah. Wonderful. It sounds like you've really highlighted um, that kind of duality of cycling being a quite a personal sort of solo thing. It's you and your bike, but it's also can be such a communal sort of gathering of people that can really sort of draw people together, as well as it being, you know, fundamentally, you're just there with your bike going down the road, but there's so much to be said for um, people joining together um, and uniting people. Uh, yeah. Thanks, you. that's no problem at all. <laughs> thanks for your questions. Fab. Um, no worries, that's fine, Rosie. <laughs> um, cool. So anybody else feel free to drop a question in the chat as well, but otherwise I'll just keep going. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you so much, Monica. So when you were handed your, your bike, was it a particular kind of bike? Was it a sort of a road bike in particular? Or was it like a hybrid that you could kind of just get pedaling on? Or did you kind of go straight into sort of the sport mode of it? How did that go? Yeah, I mean, I've been riding before the world already for 10 years. So, and I've been racing. So I had a road, road bike. The interesting part of it was actually that um, the first stage was a eight kilometer time trial uh, so I just did the eight kilometers but I broke actually my bike afterwards after the very first stage and I had to get a replacement bike and for those who have been uh, riding maybe a bit um, changing bikes for such a long distance it's not a good idea and I was very worried that I would have some sort of um, injuries um, due to that but it actually worked out and after 10 days I changed my bike back again so um, yeah, it was not the best start <laughs> of the world, but I realized, you know, sometimes you just have to go with it. Um, and I realized that every day there will be challenges coming and either I just take them as opportunities or, yeah, um, they could break me in that sense. Absolutely. And you've spoken so well about um, that. You were kind of in that sort of black square, weren't you, of, um, of uncertainty in your great diagram. You were in that right in the area. Yeah before you get towards your goal, you were right in the, um, the challenges. And as you could say, it could leave you feeling totally um, lost and downtrodden, or it, you could look at it as an opportunity. And I think that's just, that's so inspiring from what, all that you've said. Um, Thank you. Oh, we've got, a, oh no, that's just Jane saying, she's always wanted to do a big bike tour on her own terms. Ah, yes, uh, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> I think she's dropped off now but yeah oh super inspiring um would is that it, for people looking to sort of do a longer road or just like a longer bike rides is there any kind of um starting point for somebody who maybe has commuted before would you do you have any tips on somebody wanting to kind of break into longer road trips i would definitely suggest um to uh, start off with a local ride for two days over the weekend, um, just to figure out the gear, because there's a lot of, I, I, there's so many times it happened to me, I left and 50 kilometers later, I realized that I forgot <laughs> all the essentials. Um, and I think that is um, good to do when it happens in the, your vicinity rather than a different country. But as soon as you feel also more comfortable of going out and exploring the world, there's so much to do and so much, yeah, it's always more, I think, more intimate also with the environment when you're riding your bike rather than yeah taking the car absolutely yeah um and i don't know if you've been um to scotland much but the particularly around here the landscape is absolutely incredible for being out it, on your bike it's gorgeous i've never been to scotland <laughs> and i definitely want to go <laughs> yes, no no i would be completely game for it i've seen and have heard so many um great things about it mm. um especially there are a lot of also ultra endurance races, right? Going through the, uh, through the entire country. That's yeah, it. I'm game. <laughs> I'm saying <laughs> that. <laughs> uh, yes, that'd be wonderful. Um, we've actually, just to plug um, a little of what the festival can offer, we've, um, so we had one longer road ride um, booked in for tomorrow. It's completely booked up, which is um, fantastic oh, news. Yes. Uh, from us um, but uh, since it was booked up so quickly it's clear that it's something um, our users are really keen 
to get involved in so um it's absolutely something we'll be offering more of in future um, yeah really that was so great to see um we've also had a bike packing day it's, it's not I guess it's not quite the same but it's the same sort of like longer routes and you've got your, all your, your gear yep. on your bike um and we've had lots of enthusiasm about creating a, a sort of bike packing group as part of the after the festival as well sort of people really sort of tugging in their interest which has been really wonderful to see so if there's anyone here in the chat that's looking to um after this talk kind of get going get cycling um just check out what bike for good has to offer because we've got we can um, help you out with all of that i'm sure fabulous um cool i'll just see if there's any other leave a moment for any other questions anyone has or just little comments um are there, are there any other sort of closing remarks you've got monica that you'd like to sort of add in I think in regards to cycling, everyone, there are so many um, ways of to enjoy cycling. It doesn't need to be racing. It doesn't need to be uh, um, competitive. Um, I think especially now over the last year with the pandemic also, it's also a way of just let, letting go and getting your mindset free. So, um, or yeah, chatting with friends, having coffee, finding your best coffee uh, stop. So I think it's um, cycling is really not just a sport. It's really about um, whatever you want it to be and that makes it such a beautiful um, activity let's say that absolutely yeah that's um a hundred percent the sentiment of the festival that we've been organizing here as well we've kind of um hopefully been opening people's eyes to all that cycling has to offer it's not just um like you say it's not just sort of one format it can um take so many different um uh shapes and i think your emphasis especially in your rad um uh sort of idea um method and um, that emphasis on enjoyment is is so key because that's really kind of i found that from uh, this cycling festival we've put together we're just trying to push the enjoyment because um it, it's infectious when as a cyclist and you meet another cyclist you kind of you know like oh you get it you get the the fun and the the joy that cycling can bring and i can see that in you as well monica and so i feel like that's what a lot of cyclists want to now do is um Go and tell other people like oh it's great <laughs> just you just have to go and get out there and, and try it yourself but it's there's so much so much to be gained from it absolutely fab okay um so if there aren't any other questions for anyone else um we might sign off if that's okay um thank you so much for coming everyone and yeah we've made a recording of this as well so we'll be oops, sorry <laughs> um we'll be popping it in uh, the, uh, our YouTube channel as well, if anybody wants to kind of revisit it and um, see it again later. But other than that, thank you so much, Monica. That was really, really inspiring. I'm just about to go and create a 10 year goal for myself. I really am. That was uh, really, really wonderful. Um, thank you very so much for having me. <laughs> absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Makes me want to jump on a plane with my bike and cycle around Europe. That's what's really else. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Monica. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Oh, Bye-bye. <laughs>